I started my relation with El Toro when he was a makeup artist. And we did a couple of movies together. And we shot a movie called Cabeza de Vaca in 1990. And, um, and by then, we were already very, very good friends. He was um, a great guy to be around and um, very sparking, always good stuff and ideas and very, very engaging in, in, in whatever the process w uh, of the movie we were doing. And it was in that, in that period that, that he talked to me about his project of Kronos. And, um, and even to, to dare the, the conception of making a, a Mexican vampire movie was completely out of any chart and any thought behind. Um, it, it was a very fascinating story. And, and um, we talked about, about it. And I introduced him to my sister, Berta Navarro that um, is a well-known producer in Mexico, and, and she picked up the project, and, and, uh, and in a way, we all place our bets on it. With other directors, there's all this need to, to define what is what or what comes from what, or to treat the story almost of a, of a separate entity, and, uh, and then find the language for it. Del Toro is all together, all that together. It's all like a like a soup that already has so many condiments and, and so many things that are already boiling. You immediately hit the floor running in this creative space that is, that is very unique. We're not there to document a reality. We're there to create a reality. And uh, even if it's just a period piece or it's a, or it's a parallel reality, like uh, the movies that we've done on, 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 on Hellboy, for instance, or Pan's Labyrinth, where there's the realities to be created. And Kronos is another one, even though it's the most contemporary that we've done, in the sense that your camera's outside and there's a real world that's outside, but you are finding and creating the images to fit a story that, it's, that has a very strong connection with reality, but it really just spreads in many different directions. We don't necessarily announce, here, here, comes, a, uh, here comes all the ingredients of the genre, Aware, be aware that this is really a horror movie, even though, no. We, I mean, the, the character of, of Kronos and his family are, are perfectly normal. They have a, their own life, their own little micro world, and, and, and they interact themselves, and, and that's the life they have. And, and slowly, he runs into this thing by chance, and, and slowly we are venturing in a world that is completely unknown for the character and then for us. So we stay away from, from the recipes and the, and the particular keys that will take you there in advance, but we, you discover them with him. So the, the images have to be there as, as, as bridges to, to bring the audience across this parallel reality or this alter reality that, that we're creating. And that comes basically in the beginning from the understanding of the story. Most of the work he does is, is work that he writes. Or he, or that he adapts. So his his thumb and his his footprint is is there from the very beginning. He's a, a not only a guy with great ideas, but he's a very visual visual director. He can truly tell stories with images, and that's been uh, the the most important. And as he says, uh, the banquet. To, to have with him. And, and all, the, all the movies that I've done with him has followed that. He has a very clear idea of how to tell the story from the way he writes the script on. And um, so in that sense, there is, there is a very, very important first wave of how to do it from, from how the, the, the scene is approached. For instance, he's very good, he's a, an incredible drawer and he does storyboards to, to an extent. And then he would show up uh, at work with his book that he keeps. It's sort of a journal of the, of the movie, and, and, and there is the, everything that he thinks about it. He writes it there or, or, or draws or comes up with a concept. In many movies, storyboards are handed to different storyboard guys, and, and, and they don't come necessarily from the creative core of the movie. In this case, it's, the, it's completely the opposite. They're generated first by him. And it's completely linked to, the, to not only the story itself, but in the how to tell. 
and and that's where the the what I'm saying that the the films are told with images is because the images are completely at the service of the story. Everything works like like clockwork in his mind, and uh, in, in in the way that the story is told, it is really a, a shot connects with another. The narrative is visual and, and, and not necessarily in dialogue. So the, it's a visual dialogue. A lot of that narrative takes place in the set. So we know that one shot is going to take us to another, and, and, and basically a, a very, very high percentage of all of the shots of Blue are in the movie, and they're not uh, spending coverage. We, we do coverage when the, when the scene sort of demands that there's no way out from it. But the... Uh, but the, the film language, let's say, precedes the story, as opposed to find a way to, to put it together later. There is, it's very well thought out. But my work is completely at the service of, of him and his story. It's very mixed with a very personal relation. So it's not, so we are like two best friends doing the work together. De qué habla? Peel it off! Even though I had worked with prosthetic makeup before Kronos, it was, there were always things that were added to, to, and they were very circumstantial. There were never a transformation like this. And we had, we had to address it in a, very, in a very frontal way because we had very little opportunity to experiment with it. We were all sort of learning it at the same time, and uh, but that was my 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 first introduction to to the world of makeup, and then and then how what things were problematic and what things are were approachable in 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 normal lighting circumstances because you do have to treat that you cannot just treat it as another character because it is it is different materials and they de definitely react to to the light in a different way. And then from there, we have evolved to, to make, you know, Hellboy, where all the characters are in full prosthetic makeup, or to Pan's Labyrinth, where the, 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 the prosthetic makeup is, is, is huge. So it was a very good um, step into that, to that world, and, and Kronos gave me that, that opportunity. Lo mío es nada más dolor. Well, get ready for some more. There's some particular moments of the movie that I that I'm extremely happy with. One of them is the the set where De La Guardia lives, the the old man that is after the device. It was like an old factory. We shot a lot on, on that. It was just, just remains of of things, and it was very hard to light it. And it was I had to light from the roof of another building, and, and that's a very uncomfortable situation because you want to be able to move your sources around the. The scene and um, and I felt very very uncomfortable. It turns out that it's it's probably one of the best looking sets in the movie, and those things happened uh, w without. Uh, it's very difficult to anticipate that. And then also the rooftop where the sign is, which was again a very difficult and dangerous place to work, and and the sign was the only source of light, and so again there were. The, the situations where the the circumstance in itself is calling for a very particular approach lighting uh, lighting approach because there's no other one and those two are are I, I find them remarkable and and those two are the ones where my where I was probably more limited of of, of all of them so it turned out it turned out great and uh, and I learned in that with that I learned that the the that the best way to, to, to really embrace the challenge is really by taking it directly in front and take a big chance. And, and we took huge risks on doing that. Very, very, very big risks. And, and, and they paid out very well. There are many uh, ways to approach uh, a, a movie and then, and then and, and probably that's what has allowed me to do movies of many different genres, 
where I I find the language of a movie by movie, movie by movie, and uh, and sometimes I do carry things that I learned in the process that that has helped me understand what what can contribute more in this direction or the other. But uh, if you see my work, all the body of work, there's really very little resemblance between one or the other. The, I do believe that the images are the service of the story, and I try to find the, the language that each movie demands. So in that sense, if I have a, a special filter or a special lens or a special way to light the night or the way to light, I, no, I do like the darkness. That's something that I have learned to do where where you have to light for darkness and, and, and keep it. I have many fights with producers about that, that I've, uh, some of them have won and some of them have lost, but uh, but I have a very strong stand on that. And and I do believe that we are artists at work and that we are, uh, we express ourselves through it. And, and, and it's a very, it's, it's a very personal and very important thing for us. When we're making Kronos, we're, we're trying to to preserve ourselves as, as as filmmakers, and very stubbornly in a in a in a in a media in in a country where everything was really clocked and, and was very difficult difficult for us to to pursue anything. What started there and went through all these other movies and all these experiences with him, and and then going through Pan's Labyrinth and and then winning an, an Academy Award from from that and. It, it was never something that was in any in any in, in anybody's plans or imagination. It, it sort of took a life of its own, and and and, and the process started breathing, and, and and it's alive, and it's and it's not over. I mean, the the collaboration with um, with Arturo is going to continue, and and uh, we have still a lot of good good movies to make.